for Pacifica Radio, January the 5th, 2023. I'm Scott Horton. This is Anti-War Radio. All right, y'all, welcome to the show. It is Anti-War Radio. I'm your host, Scott Horton. I'm editorial director of Antiwar.com and editor of the new book, Hotter Than the Sun, Time to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. You can find my full interview archive, more than 5,800 of them now, going back to 2003, at scotthorton.org and at youtube.com slash scotthortonshow. And you can follow me on Twitter, at scotthortonshow. It is Anti-War Radio. I'm Scott Horton. And our next guest today is Ramsey Baroud the editor of Palestine Chronicle, regular writer at antiwar.com, and author of a bunch of great books. The latest is Our Vision for Liberation, Engaged Palestinian Leaders and Intellectuals Speak Out, edited by Mr. Baroud and Elon Pape as well. Welcome back to the show. Ramsey, how are you doing, sir? Doing great, and thanks for having me, Scott. Uh, Very happy to have you on the show here. So, start of the new year. Benjamin Netanyahu is back in power. There's been all kinds of violence on the West Bank, and we got to figure out what it all means. Can we start, sir, with this statement by Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, came back to power for the third time as prime minister of Israel. And he said, these are the basic lines of the national government headed by me. The Jewish people have an exclusive and unquestionable right to all areas of the land of Israel. The government will promote and develop settlement in all parts of the land of Israel, in the Galilee, the Negev, the Golan, Judea, and Sumeria. Now, there are a lot of people who don't know too much about Israel except a shape on a map somewhere and might not begin to understand the importance of that statement. Could you break it down for us a little bit, Ramsey, about what it is that Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to get at here? Well, basically, aside from how... uh, um Israel and Israeli uh, leaders and officials uh, reference and, and, you know, what language they use to describe Palestinian and Israeli uh, areas, uh, Judea, Samaria, for example, uh, is the West Bank. Um, so aside from all of that, if you really try to, uh, uh, you know, put all of these areas that he added together, he is talking about the entirety of historic Palestine. Today is Israel and uh, the occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem, including Gaza, including the Golan Heights, which are under international law occupied uh, territories that belong to Syria and so forth. So basically he's saying, not only I will not make any territorial concessions per international law, I intend to make that permanent policy. Now in his defense, This is something that really most Israelis agree on anyway, Netanyahu or no Netanyahu. I mean, the nation state law that passed in 2018 um, indicated essentially the same thing. Uh, Palestinians basically had no rights in the nation state law and Israelis and and, uh, Jews had the rights to self-determination, all the rights, all the basic political and human uh, rights, while Palestinians had none, not even the rights to have a language to, you know, a a language, a culture, a history, all of this was denied in the nation state law. So it's important that we do not pretend that something new has just happened in Israel right now. This has been going on for a while. It's just getting worse. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It is getting worse. And the likes you know, uh, these um, sinister characters like uh, Bezilit Smotrich and uh, Ben Gvir and others who have always been more or less on the fringe of Israeli politics, although part of the Knesset, part of the Israeli, Israeli parliament, they are now ministers, ministers of finance, ministers of defense, ministers of national security and so forth and so on. And they are now making the decisions. Uh, And that's particularly terrifying because it means that Israel is indeed insisting on creating the environment needed for a religious war, not just between Israel and the Palestinians, but in the entire region as well. It's Anti-War Radio. I'm talking with Ramsey Baroud. And now, so I think you're right that probably the most important thing here is not that the argument has been advanced by the Israeli side. Probably the most important thing here is just that 
the prime minister is reiterating in case anyone missed it that the two state solution is dead 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 when he says this includes judea and samaria that means all of the west bank and that means that from the river to the sea palestine will not be free but it will be one state that's right and that's kind of particularly ironic because there is a growing movement among Palestinians, and now it actually has a needed critical mass in the West Bank, where they believe, including this guy, that a one state is the only solution. But of course, when we refer to one state, we are talking about a state for all of its citizens, be it Jews or Arabs, be it Muslims or Christians or Jews, it doesn't matter. We're talking about a secular democratic state. But that's not the one state solution that is not only proposed, but actually implemented as we speak by the Netanyahu government. This is not a state for all of its citizens, and it's certainly not a democratic state. It's a state for Jews only. And that creates all sorts of questions. If that is the case, and you want to maintain the Jewish political hegemony, but also the Jewish numbers, meaning the demographics, what, what are you going to do now with the Palestinians? Because they are really more or less 50-50 here of the population. And some people actually say the Arab population, be it Muslims and Christians, have already exceeded that of Jews in terms of demographics. What's going to happen to them now when they continue to pose a so-called demographic threat? Are they going to be pushed out? Are they going to be placed within Bantu stands like South Africa, you know, behind lock and key? Because you can't possibly maintain Jewish majority and Jewish hegemony with the current status quo. And that is that is particularly terrifying and really should worry even the United States. I know that the U.S. is always very good at finding new excuses and formulas to cope and coexist with whatever, you know, fascist government Israel throws at them. But I also think that even from their own political agenda and, and, and viewpoint, they should worry in the sense that they want to stabilize the region, they want to stabilize the Middle East in order for them to kind of remain to be the only, the only power in control and so forth and so on. They, they don't know what they are dealing with here. Something terrible is going to happen. And we are, we are talking about the potential of a real war. So everybody should, should be very worried about what will happen in Israel now that Netanyahu not only has a government of fascists, but it, he has absolute majority, meaning the right parties in Israel, the ultra-Orthodox, uh, ultra uh, like Shas, for example, and the ultra-nationalists, um, and others have a total and absolute majority in the Knesset, which means it's going to be a stable government with the support of majority of Israelis. What's going to happen now, if they are not reined in somehow. Hang on just one second. Hey, y'all, the audiobook of my book, Enough Already, Time to End the War on Terrorism, is finally done. Yes, of course, read by me. It's available at Audible, Amazon, Apple Books, and soon on Google Play and whatever other options there are out there. It's my history of America's war on terrorism from 1979 through today. Give it a listen and see if you agree. It's time to just come home. Enough already. Time to end the war on terrorism. The audiobook. Hey guys, I've had a lot of great webmasters over the years, but the team at expanddesigns.com have by far been the most competent and reliable. Harley Abbott and his team have made great sites for the show and the Institute, and they keep them running well, suggesting and making improvements all along. Make a deal with expanddesigns.com for your new business or news site. They will take care of you. Use the promo code SCOTT and save $500. That's expanddesigns.com. Man, I wish I was in school so I could drop out and sign up for Tom Woods' Liberty Classroom instead. Tom has done such a great job on putting together a classical curriculum for everyone from junior high schoolers on up through the postgraduate level. And it's all very reasonably priced. Just make sure you click through from the link in the right margin at scotthorton.org. Tom Woods' Liberty Classroom. Real history, real economics, real education. All right, so Ramsey, you keep bringing up the possibility of violent conflict here. I wonder if you worry, and I know it's a rock and a hard place situation, but might that not be what the Benjamin Netanyahu government wants? 
to force another intifada so they can then portray it as an aggressive invasion by terrorist forces trying to steal Israel. I, I think that is a real possibility, but I think it's a greater possibility that certain elements in his government, I mean, Netanyahu is an extremely savvy politician. You can't be a prime minister six times and serve more than the founder of Israel itself, Ben uh, and 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 not be very, very smart. So Netanyahu wants this to carry on. He wants to exploit the rights and the fascist and the ultra-nationalist in order for him basically to, to remain at the helm of Israeli politics and at the same time avoid legal accountability for his corruption trials. That's what he wants. The others know that, and they know that he's in a very vulnerable position. And when I say the others, I'm specifically talking about you know, Itmar bin Gvir and Bezalit Smotrich. Yeah, and please tell um, us more about them, too, because this really is important, his new cabinet. Uh, absolutely. Well, uh, Itmar bin Gvir, this is the guy who has been raiding Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Holy Shrines, Muslim and Christians in Jerusalem, for years. I mean, he made a career out of it. He goes running there with a number of unruly, illegal settlers. He's a, his big constituency is not just the ultra rights in Israel, but also the settlers in the West Bank. That's how you know he, he gained fame in Israel through these specific raids on social media. Every day you go there, bin fear, running with a gun, chasing after Palestinians. Well, guess what? Now he is actually a minister and a minister of security uh, in Israel, the Israeli government. In fact, the, that ministry has been increased. Uh, they, they actually uh, expanded in terms of its power and influence just to accommodate what Bin Gvir wants to do, not only to Palestinians in the occupied territories, but also to the uh, Palestinians in Palestine 48, today's Israel. And Smotrich is also an illegal settler in the in the occupied West Bank. He hits the hardline party known as the Religious Zionist Party, and he made a deal with another religious party called Shas that would allow them to run the Treasury Department or the re- Treasury Ministry in Israel through some kind of a rotation. So, and and you would say, well, okay, maybe he's a right winger, but he is a trusted person. Actually, he was imprisoned because of his corruption and embezzlement in the past. But Netanyahu had a genius idea. He actually had the Knesset change the law of Israel that would allow convicted criminals to become ministers in government. So he is desperate. He needs them because their vote is essential for Netanyahu not to go to prison. But they also know that very well, and they are going to exploit that to the maximum. In fact, just a few days after Ben Gvir became a minister, he took a large number of Israeli soldiers and they raided Al-Aqsa Mosque, hoping for a Palestinian reaction. The Palestinians didn't react. And that's another discussion of why the Palestinians didn't react, not out of, of weakness, but because they did not want Ben Gvir to determine the nature and the scope of the Palestinian action. The Palestinians now develop this new strategy where they only retaliate when they feel like they are ready and it's going to serve certain kind of strategic and political purpose. So Ben Gvir was quite disappointed that he raided Al-Aqsa and came back and, and he did not create a major conflict in the West Bank. But that's exactly what Ben Gvir wants. They are pushing towards that end. And I don't think that Netanyahu wants to do so. And the reason, the just a final proof of why Netanyahu is not yet keen on a conflict right now, he actually was on his way a couple of days ago to the United Arab Emirates. He was trying to say the normalization with Israel is not going to be affected by any of this. And the Emiratis are waiting for me at the airport and everything is going to be good and dandy. Well, guess what? When Ben Gvir raided Al-Aqsa, Netanyahu was forced to cancel his very, very strategic and important visit to the United Arab Emirates because the timing was terrible and Mm -hmm. Netanyahu was disappointed by it. But he can't control these creatures that he brought with him to the government. His, 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 uh, uh, the Frankenstein monsters are now running loose in the West Bank and in Israel. And I think Netanyahu is finding himself in a very, very tough situation. And I would, I think that he would rather go to war than lose the government 
But both choices for him are going to be very difficult choices, at least at, during this time. Mm-hmm. All right, last question here real quick. Uh, Ramsey Baroud from Palestine Chronicle. This article in Middle East Eye, a uh, member of parliament says it's time to, quote, subdue Palestinians once and for all, end quote, in the, quote, last war. So I wonder about, you know, the position that the Palestinians are being put in here. And I've noticed in your past couple of articles for antiwar.com, you've mentioned this group, the Lion's Den, which is a new violent resistance group in the West Bank. And, you know, obviously, on one hand, these people have the right to defend themselves, a duty to defend their families and so forth. And yet, on the other hand, some of these far right wingers in Netanyahu's cabinet would love to see an excuse for some kind of all time clampdown. I mean, I don't know what they think they're going to do with all the people who live on the West Bank, but. Right. And, and you know, I mean, first of all, it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm going to reassure everybody that the Palestinians are not going to be suppressed once and for all. That's just nonsense, because we are looking at 75 years of constant repression, constant military occupation, apartheid, violence and lots of violence. And Palestinians are actually in a stronger position today than they have ever been. So I can't really imagine that's happening. But in fact, the rise of the religious ultra-orthodoxy and ultra-nationalism in Israel is a reflection of some weak spots among the Israeli ruling classes. They feel that they are actually losing, that everything that they have done in order for them to guarantee demographic majority, to suppress Palestinians, to push them out, all of this has actually failed. Yes, they killed a lot of Palestinians. In fact, the UN is saying that in the last year, 2022, 177 Palestinians were killed in the West Bank. That is the largest number of Palestinians, you know, killed in the West Bank in a long time, in one year. But that did not actually change much on the ground. New groups are rising, a new sense of unity is, is, is crystallizing amongst Palestinians. And that's really where, why I think the likes of Ben Beer and others are rising in Israel, because the Israeli public is dissatisfied. They haven't won, they can't declare victory, and they need some savior to come and finally vanquish the Palestinians once and for all. But if the very savvy, Zionists, with the total support of the West, could not manage to or did not manage to suppress Palestinians. How this kind of increasingly alienated Israeli ruling class is able to do that today, I don't know how. I don't think it's possible. But what I know is possible is that they could, in fact, uh, uh, unleash very deadly wars on Palestinians in which a lot of civilians are going to be killed. We know that because they haven't, they have done it in the past, uh, uh, in, you know, six different wars in, in, in the last 20 years alone. So they are capable of instigating war, but they cannot determine the outcome. Israel has lost its ability to determine the outcomes of wars or to declare real victory against Palestinians. And that's why the Israelis are frustrated But I think their frustration is going to carry on for a very long time because it's simply not going to happen per historical experience. All right, you guys, that is Ramsey Baroud, editor of Palestine Chronicle. His latest book is Our Vision for Liberation, and you can find all of his writing at antiwar.com. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you, Scott. All right, y'all. And that has been Antiwar Radio for today. I'm your host, Scott Horton editorial director of antiwar.com and editor of the new book, Hotter Than the Sun, Time to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. Find my full interview archive, more than 5,800 of them now, going back to 2003 at scotthorton.org and at youtube.com slash scotthortonshow. And follow me on Twitter at scotthortonshow. I'm here every Thursday from 2.30 to 3 on KPFK 90.7 FM in LA. See you next week.